All right, so I'm going to be talking about a uh, clock project that I've been working on. Uh, but first, I give you a little background. Um, so, you know, usually clocks are either like mechanical or electrical, right? So you've got like old school mechanical clocks and mechanical watches that purely just work through mechanical action. And then you've got like digital clocks and electronic watches that are purely electronic. Well, I'm interested in clocks that do both at the same time. So what you're seeing here is a clock that I built several years ago that's both mechanical and electrical at the same time. So it has um, electronics and an electronic display, but it's timed off of a pendulum. And you can actually see it swinging in there. So I'll open this really quick. I made some videos on this in the past, by the way. You can just look through my old videos and find it. But it's got a, um, it's got a pendulum that's being driven by some magnets and coils and um, what the circuits do is they actually count the pendulum swings to keep the time and convert it into this display Right, so it's a combination of a pendulum and an electronic counting circuit and an LED display um, That drives this clock So after I finished this one I started thinking if there were like other ways you could combine mechanical and electrical and one of the ideas I came up with was to use a mechanical watch movement like you would find in like a wristwatch or a pocket watch and pick up the vibrations like the ticks of the watch and use that to keep the time and i've actually got that prototyped over here so this is um the basic circuit of that takes the uh, vibrations of a pocket watch movement and converts it into um, a digital clock output and so here I'm going to show you really quick. This is a, um, a watch movement that I was previously using, right? So it's just a little mechanical watch, just a gear set. And on the back side, I have this little um, contact microphone, a piezo, and it's epoxied in place. So basically I found a spot on the back side of this where um, there were no mechanical moving parts where, you know, the glue was going to interfere with it. But at the same time, it would pick up vibrations. And so I was using this for a while and this worked really well, but now I'm using a different watch movement. It's actually a much larger pocket watch movement down here. And I'm going to put them next to each other for a size comparison. So you can see how that, that pocket watch movement is significantly larger. And so basically what I'm doing with this, this little contact microphone is I pick up the vibrations of the watch ticking, which is five times per second. And I convert that to an electronic signal. And I've actually got that on the scope right now. So on the uh, horizontal scale, you have one second, and that's five ticks per second that we're looking at, right? And so this is this is like the amplified analog output of that little contact microphone. And so I've got this amplifier circuit over here. And of course, I have to convert this to digital. So I do this um, in several steps. So I'm going to kind of walk you through really quick so here's the like the raw ticking signal from the watch but I've got to convert this to 5 volt logic so I'm going to do that really quick I'm just going to move my probe to show you if I can get that thing in there all right so there's um five ticks per second and it's now in um five volt logic levels but as you can see, it's kind of messy, right? There's a lot of transitions going on here, so it needs to be debounced. And so I use I do a five 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 timer for that. It's a pretty simple setup. So that is right over here. Okay, so there you can see now those five uh, ticks per second have been cleaned up, right? So I've I now have a, um, a nice, clean uh, 5 hertz uh, reference frequency coming from that pocket watch. Um, but now I have this other problem to solve where I'm using this um, little alarm clock I see right here. And this needs a reference frequency of either 50 or 60 hertz. And so what I'm going to do is multiply this 5 hertz signal by 10 to create a 50 hertz signal. And I do that just with... Um, basically a counter circuit I made, and so I'm going to show you the output of that really quick. Right here. So every time, um, so five times a second, it triggers a, um, 
a 10 cycle pulse. So I'm gonna zoom in on that really quick. So each of those little um, groups of pulses has 10 pulses within them. And so there's five of those per second. So that gives a time average frequency of 50 Hertz. And then this clock I see converts that into a one Hertz signal. And that's what the flashing LED is. So let me adjust my scope really quick. All right, so there's a, a one hertz reference frequency. And it just goes to a seven segment display right here. So <clears throat> anyways, yeah, so this is an idea I've been thinking about for a while. I've been, this has been kind of going on in the back of my head for a couple years now. I've had this idea, but I've, I finally um, have a prototype implemented. And it, it works pretty well. It, it's, um, it keeps time pretty accurately because you know, the balance wheels on these pocket watches, um, they're, they're very precise and they keep pretty good time. Um, this watch actually has to be wound with a little key. I'm gonna grab that really quick. I mean, obviously it's, you know, it's a pocket watch movement, it has to be wound. So, I'm trying to dig out this little key set. I found this universal uh, pocket watch key set on eBay. So, um, pocket watches came with a whole bunch of different sizes of keys to wind them. And this particular watch is a size 7. Let me see if I can find that really quick. There it is. So there's the key I used to wind it up. And you see it's got a little square opening there. And over here you can see that little square peg on the left. That's how you wind it up. You just stick that key on there and turn it. And so... I haven't determined like exactly how much runtime you get per wind. I'm still kind of trying to figure that out through trial and error. But um, yeah, this has been a fun little project. Um, of course, it's going to come off the breadboard. I'm going to have this thing, you know, in a case, in a you know, permanently soldered form and permanent display, just like this clock. Of course, it's it's going to be kind of similar to this, but obviously, it's going to have a number display instead of um, hour and minute hands. But it's going to be, like, aesthetically, there are going to be some similarities. It's going to be in a wooden case. It's going to have an LED display. Of course, it's going to have numbers instead of, um, like I said, those clock hands. So, so, yeah, this is just something I've been working on for a while. Um, it's been pretty fun. Um, I will continue working on this, and um, as it progresses along, I will make some more update videos. Thanks for watching.